Welcome back to another data mine, guys. Today we have the newest Chinese event. It is for 2024 Lunar New Year, Year of the Dragon, Spring Festive Fiasco. This is one of the rare times that we have a maintenance on a Tuesday instead of a Thursday. And oh boy, is there a lot to cover today. So I'm going to try and get through this pretty quickly. First things first, we have some system optimizations that fix a bunch of the bugs that we've been seeing. For example, your submarine fleet now affects your ACV value. I 13 just got a whole lot better. Additionally, the catch-up system for PR5 has been added. PR4 can now be enhanced with coins. And DR3, aka Drake, can now be enhanced with coins too. Rookie research missions have been added to PR5 to catch up new players. And everything looks set to get ready for PR7 this summer. And PR6's fate simulation soon after that. I guess I should probably get on my PR6 videos soon, shouldn't I? Speaking of fate simulations, we get a fate simulation today. It is from DR3. R4, Hakiryu. Sadly, Agir didn't get anything, but I anticipate her being right around the corner. Hakiryu will basically see upgrades to two skills. Her first skill with her additional special airstrike and lightning barrage will be upgraded. There's not much to say here other than it's going to give her a 78% damage boost on this barrage. So one of the hardest hitting carriers is going to hit even harder. In her other skill, she is now going to get 20% boost to her aviation and hit stat instead of 15% as well well as a 20% boost to anti-air stat. Additionally, these stat boosts are no longer locked to her having Japanese planes. However, you're probably still going to equip her with a Japanese plane, because another addition to this skill is she's going to get 10% slot efficiency for all of her plane slots if you're equipped with an IJN plane. Conveniently, she can also get this buff if you have another IJN ship in your fleet. However, given that you typically want to equip her with a Japanese Tenrai, this is not too much of a restriction. Nothing about these buffs is flashy or cool, but there is a significant amount of damage increase in her barrages, she gets flat stat boosts, she has less restrictions, and her slot efficiencies go up. The amount of DPS that she's able to produce now is much higher than she had prior to the Fate Simulation. Simple, but very powerful. Starting off with a bang. Also, the last thing about the PR system, the prototype shop is going to be updated. The UR light cruiser gun from PR5, aka the Plymouth gun, is now going to be permanent available there. This should give a lot of players access to multiple copies of this or their first copy if they don't have one already. With this update, the prototype shop is also going to include PR6 prints as well as the metal shop too. So if you haven't already finished all of your PR6 ships yet, you should be able to do that pretty quickly if you're staying on top of actively playing. A lot of those updates will be coming on February 1st instead of today, although they are in the data mine to be rolled over automatically when we hit that date. Another example of this is the update to the extreme challenge mode. This month we're going to have Aquarius, whose boss will be Newcastle. She is a light armor, light cruiser. We are just cruising along on these challenge modes. Pretty soon we'll actually be back to June when these all started last year, so I'm interested to see if they'll actually start wrapping or not. Another thing that rolls over automatically on February 1st is going to be the cruise missions. Our new meta ship for this season is going to be Kimberly meta, so let's take a look at her. Kimberly herself is a pretty weak destroyer, and Kimberly meta Meta has similar stats to her, although she's kind of gone more aggro. She gives up some of her EHP values to get more damage through her firepower and torpedo stats, although none of her stats are particularly that good, so let's look at the skills. Skill number one gives her plus 15% firepower and torpedo stat and a 70% chance to proc a barrage every 20 seconds. It will also reduce her current torpedo weapon reload time by 5 seconds. Nothing in here is all that special. The weapon reload time reduction is kind of cool, although given Given that it's coming at the 20 second mark, it could be very easy to not fully maximize this ability, given that she probably is going to be reloading from her preloaded right around that mark anyway. You could argue that she could take a slower, more powerful torpedo, but it doesn't guarantee that she's going to get the reduction, because it has a chance of proccing 70%. Skill number two, every ship killed by this ship is buffing her 4% hit stat, max is 5 stacks, so that's a 20% boost to her hit stat. Okay, you have to kill things though, so really only effective in mobs. When a torpedo weapon is reloaded, every enemy on the field grants her a 10% crit rate. That can stack five times, so that's 50% crit rate. That's actually one of the highest crit rate buffs ever. It only lasts for 12 seconds though. It's very cool, but it takes a while to get going, I guess. I don't know. The fact that she can crit like 
50% right every time that she's going to get her torps is kind of cool, but she's just not good enough torp wise. Like I see what they were trying to do here by giving her all these hit stats and giving her their weapon reduction on her torp and then giving her a bunch of crit rate, but it's just not going to be enough. I mean, theoretically, she should be critting a ton off of her torpedoes. My first impression of her is that she is a collection-only ship. Although now watch the comments come in and say that she is amazing because of her impressive crit rate and she can do all these things. I don't know, but I would say she's collection only. I'm not too excited about her personally. So with this update is majorly a Lunar New Year event. There are a ton of festivities around this. If you've been missing any of the Chinese ships of late, there are plenty of ways to get many of the old ones. A lot of their events are rerunning as well as their skins and all those things. So there'll be tons to do. One of the more important mini events that's coming back is the Manjuru resort which is going to give you red envelopes which is free gems so that's exciting that's pretty standard i'm happy to see that that's coming back as with most events this event will bring us a new dorm theme as well as a bunch of new skins for all the new ships and a couple other ones as well as the rental skins to try them out the event itself is going to be more like a raid event where you will do commissions to earn tickets and you can use those tickets to get into the reward sorties such as the ex difficulty the accumulation of points here are going to give you exclusive items. So let's talk about those equipments here. The first equipment is an elite auxiliary equipment, Hung Chang's fishing rod. Obviously a nod at the new battle cruiser that we have yet to go over. However, it's a pretty basic auxiliary item that gives hit stat and firepower, although at levels much lower than the current best in slot equipments for these slots. Like a Fumo radar is better and can be equipped on frontliners as well. Skill wise, when it's equipped by Hung Chang, 15 seconds after the start of the battle, she fires a non-damaging shell that generates a zone that lasts for 10 seconds, and enemies in this zone take 5% more damage. Honestly, this looks like collection tier only. If it's not going on Hung Chang, it doesn't go on anything, because it's just straight worse stat-wise than a bunch of other options. Unless Hung Chang gets an increased boost from equipping this item, I don't foresee this being used anywhere. Not even on its namesake ship. Next up, we have a new rocket missile, the SY-1A. This is basically just an upgrade of the SY-1. It's got more damage, it fires faster, it has the same torpedo stat and the modifiers, like it is literally just an upgrade, it is better. So make sure you pick up this exclusive item if you're planning on running DDGs. Obviously the SY-1s, you can get in the core data shop pretty easily. So this version is better and exclusive to this event. Do not miss out. So with a new rocket, let's talk about a new rocket destroyer we're gonna be getting. Tai Yun is gonna be getting a retrofit, which will turn her from a destroyer to a guided missile destroyer. I hope I don't have to tell you how much of an upgrade this is. When her sisters Ching Chung and An Shan got this upgrade before they turned from terrible to great overnight. She'll be able to fire missiles instead of torpedoes and also be in the back line if you choose to use her there. She'll get a massive amount of stat boosts, including increases to her health if you put her in that back line. And why not? A main gun plus one to boot. Typically you're going to put her in the front line unless you're trying to run something meme with destroyers in the back, which is kind of fun actually. Missiles are preloaded. Taiyun Retrofit is going to get a new skill as well as an upgrade to her old skill. Her old skill upgrade is pretty lame. It just increases her torpedo stat by 25% in addition to the other stat boost she was going to get, but she still has to be in a fleet with six ships to get this, and it doesn't buff anyone else. Her sisters Anshan and Cheng Chung have much better buffing skills here, although she'll be able to easily self-buff, and she'll get the buffs from her sisters if you put them together. Her second skill is a variant of the missile destroyer skill that her two sisters have, which gives her a missile strike charge, as well as a reduction in the burn that she's going to take, and she's going to have a special barrage that triggers every 15 seconds, and she is going to give a shield to the Vanguard ship that can block six bullets or lasts six seconds. And if that were it, I would probably be out here saying that Taiyun Retrofit is the weakest of the three guided missile destroyers we have so far, but that is not it. Her barrage is cracked. It's aimed, it's piercing, has shrapnel, and ignores shields. It's actually very good, and she's going to be a pretty powerful ship. With guided missile destroyers, I always have this urge to put them in the back line, because I think it's so funny to put a destroyer in the back line, but she obviously needs to sit in the front line. She got a good retrofit. Fit. I'm happy Snake Girl is good. She is not the only retrofit we have today. Chen Hai is also getting a retrofit. In addition to some much needed stat boosts, she is going to 
should no longer be locked to seaplanes. Oh my gosh, that is so helpful. Seaplanes are awful. In her first slot, she's going to have to equip fighters instead. They are still much better than seaplanes, and with the rocket fighters and stuff, they're not terrible. And in her second slot, she can equip any plane except ASW, that's awesome, so she can get torpedo bombers, and this is gonna really help her. She also gets a new skill that gives her 15% aviation stat boost right off the bat. Also, when she launches an airstrike, an additional launch of barrage made of planes and black and white colored shots are going to come out. The black and white colored shots are going to contribute to her first skill, which gives the debuffs if four shots hit the same enemy. So this is really gonna help her do what she's trying to do by stacking those same colors and the fact that the Chinese finally have an aircraft carrier that can have real planes is amazing, but let's not get too excited here. Chen Hai is still not very good. You'd only use her in some sort of meme fleet where you need to use all Chinese ships. It's cool that the Chinese now have a carrier that's seemingly viable and not just a joke, so the retrofit is very good for her. However, after retrofit, she's still not like a great ship. Just keep that in mind. It's exciting to see her get improved like this, but she's not amazing. All right, this far into the video, and we haven't even gotten into the event ships yet. We've already reviewed four ships, and none of them have been part of the specific event, so let's talk about the event ships specifically. Four of them are going to be in the gotcha, and one of them is going to be in her own mini event. So let's talk about the one in the mini event first. Feiyun is an elite destroyer, one of many during this event, that will be coming from basically just logging in. That's all you're going to have to do to get her. Stat-wise, she is awful, although that is to be expected as a Chinese elite destroyer. Her actual efficiencies aren't terrible, they're alright. Skill number one, 10 seconds after the battle starts and every 15 seconds after that, she embarks on an adventure? The adventure ends after 5 seconds, a teammate will be selected to randomly receive a buff for 8 seconds, and an enemy will receive a debuff for the same amount of time. What? If her HP is below 50% or an adventure fails, they didn't even mention how that happens, she increases her speed by 5 and she decreases the damage she receives by 10%. Also, a 5% evasion rate boost. This procs once per battle. Okay, this is just a weird, janky skill for fun, I guess. Not amazing, to be honest. I don't even know the percentages of failing the adventure, though, so I can't give a full... But even if it... Like, yeah, this is just not good. Alright, let's go on to skill number two. Torpedo stat, plus 20%. If there are other Chinese ships, damage is increased by plus 10%, so that's cool. She also launches a barrage every 20 seconds, and that barrage is enhanced if there is a non-destroyer Dragon Emperor ship. Interesting, so you can just throw her with Yatsen or something like that, or maybe Chenhai, or we're getting a new Chinese battle cruiser in this event too, so you could throw her with that. So, in theory, you could throw her with plenty of things now. The Chinese have finally actually been supported as a faction. This ship is collection tier, and I expect it to be. It's an elite destroyer that you get for free by logging in. It's trash. All right, we're finally on to the gotcha. We'll start with the first and only SR of this event, Huan Chan. And stat-wise, she leaves a lot to be desired. Across the board, she has low health, low firepower, bad efficiencies. Like, she is a terrible battle cruiser from a stat perspective. So let's see if her skills do anything to make up for that. The Chinese are pretty good at doing that. Skill number one, at the start of the battle, assess the situation situation and provide instructions to either vanguards or main fleets? What? Okay, so apparently when the battle starts, you're going to randomly select either the Vanguard or the main fleet to buff. You don't get to choose, it just happens. Theoretically, it's 50-50, but I don't know at this point in time yet. So, if she selects the Vanguard, she randomly procs one of the random effects below. Like, what is with all this randomness? Holy crap. The first variant buffs your Vanguard fleet by 8% for their firepower, torpedo, and reload stat. The second buff that you could get is that they take 10% less damage instead. If she picks the main fleet at the start of the battle, then she randomly picks one of these effects. The main fleet gets 8% boost to their firepower, aviation, and hit stat, or the main fleet gets 10% boost to their anti-air stat and take 8% less damage. So let's start by saying the obvious. All of these skills are good. They are not locked to the Chinese. You can use them with any faction. They're all good. They're like very good to have. They're good stats to be boosting. They're at good levels. But they're so random. You can't 
a plan around it at all. And I think that's probably why they did it. So you can't really use this ship for any sort of buffing as a support character because you don't know if you're going to get the buff you need. There's just so much RNG associated with this skill. And it's not even like that you get a bad option. All of them are decent options, but it might not be the option that you need at the time. Skill number two, she gets plus 10% reload stat. That's not very big. She also ignores the no ammo debuff. That's cool. So there's another ship that can do that, and that can be important in certain places. Also, there's a 70% chance to proc a barrage every 15 seconds. If there are other Chinese ships in the fleet, the barrage chance is 100%. So this ship is probably not going to see much play outside of the Chinese faction itself. It does have some interesting things like the fact that its first skill can buff any faction. It doesn't matter what faction the ship is. And its second skill has no ammo debuff ignored. That's pretty cool. It is a standard barrage battleship. It's actually a battle cruiser. It's weaker than your traditional battle cruisers. And battle cruisers are already weaker than battleships. So you're giving up a lot to use it. However, if you're talking about in the Chinese faction, you get a ton of buffs from the other ships, as well as the fact that there just aren't very good options in the Chinese faction. So she's one of the better damage dealers for the Chinese faction. Just keep in mind before this event, you we were relying on seaplanes and destroyers that were using missiles in the back line to make up a back line if you're trying to run an all Chinese fleet. So the fact they actually have a legitimate battle cruiser is actually a big step. Chen Hai also, as we showed earlier, becomes a real carrier with real planes now. So like you actually have a back line that's starting to develop, but it's developing to like 2020 Azure Lane levels in 2024. So like still not very good. All right, moving on, we have the destroyers. We have two more elite destroyers to go through their sisters. We'll start with Lung Wu. Her stats are awful. They're even worse than Fen Yun's stats. Let's look at skill number one. Every three seconds after the battle starts, she procs a barrage that scales off her torpedo stat. Every fifth time she hits the barrage, so this would be every 15 seconds or so, she heals the lowest HP ship in the fleet by 3% of their HP. That's really cool. Like, she's got a good barrage that happens every three seconds, and she's going to be able to heal off it. Kind of sucks that it maxes out at three heals per battle. I don't know why they needed to cap it at the 45 second mark. Like, okay, it doesn't seem that broken. It's actually seems seems very good for an elite destroyer. Yeah, that's actually a really good skill. I mean, it, it goes on a terrible base body of a ship that's awful, but like, that's a great skill. Skill number two, with the power of magic? Okay. Every torpedo wave launched from the equipped torpedo weapon will launch another wave a second later. Oh my gosh. All right. So she basically has double loaded torpedoes every time and it should be there at the beginning. So she'll have a preloaded torpedo. So she fires twice the preloaded and then she fires twice every time she reloads. So she basically gets two waves of torpedoes every time. That's amazing. Her torpedo stat and evasion stat go up 15% and she takes 30% less damage. Like, what is this skill? This skill is crazy. If this skill was on any SR ship with, you know, 400 torpedo stat, this would be amazing. This is on an elite ship with 250 torpedo stat. Oh my gosh. This is just comical. Like, she is so bad stat-wise. Like, we're talking like 2019 levels, power levels of Jerlane. And then the skills are just bonkers. Like, crazy crazy good. Yeah, I don't know. This is interesting. I just want to use it because it's hilarious. I don't think it's going to be fantastic, but it's just hilarious how good those skills are, and it potentially makes her viable to use in certain situations, but she's not going to be best in slot. Don't take don't take this the wrong way, but it's really fun just how good her skills are. All right, let's move on to the next elite destroyer, her sister, Hu Hen, who literally copy-paste all of the stats. They are identical. All right, moving on to the skill. She launches a barrage every second? What? <laughs> Launches a barrage every second. One second. Okay, so the fifth hit will happen five seconds into the battle. Crazy. Then, then she boosts her firepower by 5%. That procs only three times per battle, so 15% max. That will happen very quick. <laughs> like, very, very quick. 15 seconds into the battle. That's hilarious. Skill number two, with the power of magic, she's going to launch a torpedo weapon twice all the time too. Okay, crazy. She gets speed and evasion stat boost by 15%, and then she also gets the 30% uh, reduction in damage. Also really good. So they have identical second skills. That second skill is amazing, and their first skills are very similar. The This one actually fires her barrage more often and boosts her attack a little bit more. The other one has a heal. They're very similar. These two together would be hilarious. They'll just be throwing barrages 
all over the place. Like, you'll just be proccing constantly. Like, I just can only imagine the battle where the name of the skill pops up when the skill procs. It'll be like every second for the one and the other one to be every three seconds. It'll be just all over the place. Crazy. I don't know. These are kind of exciting elite destroyers, both of them. It's probably the longest I've talked about elite destroyer in a data mine for a while. They're cool. They're exciting. I like them a lot. They're not particularly going to be amazing because anytime you're coming in with 88 firepower and 250 torpedo stat and less than 2000 health, you're going to be struggling, but those skills are really good. So I don't know. These are fun. I, if you're a new player, you could totally use these unironically. Like they're not bad. All right. After talking up those elite destroyers, let's move on to our last ship of the event. Finally, it is an elite light cruiser Chian. Stat wise, well, what can I tell you? She's terrible. Although hold that thought for one second, because if we look at the equipment efficiencies, it's kind of interesting. So she has a main gun plus one. So that's very interesting. And she has a torpedo slot in addition to a destroyer slot. She gives up her anti-air slot. But holy crap, is she trying to be like a UR heavy cruiser? It's hilarious. She's got a main gun plus one plus a destroyer auxiliary slot plus torpedoes. Obviously, she has terrible stats to base those off of. And the fact she doesn't have an anti-air gun means she's going to die really quickly on top of her terrible stats for anti-air and health. So yeah, she She's not going to survive very long, but she is going hard for trying to do some damage on the equipment wise. It's not going to work out too well because she doesn't even have a lot of damage. Let's go into her skills. She gets plus 10% evasion stat if there are other Chinese ships in the fleet. And she increases the fleet damage by 5% with the other Chinese ships dealing an additional 5% more damage. So basically, if there's another Chinese ship in the fleet that you're running her with, so basically just her and one other, then and all of your fleet, regardless of their faction, is going to get 5% damage buff. And she and all of the other Chinese ships are going to get a 10% damage buff. This is a very interesting universal buff. She's not going to survive very long to make this amazing. But just keep in mind, this is a 5% universal damage buff by just putting her in the fleet with another Chinese ship. Which shouldn't be too hard to bring. Those missile destroyers are not bad. Alright, skill number 2. 50% chance to proc every 8 seconds. Firepower and torpedo stat are increased by 10% if the barrage fails to proc. So basically half the time she has a barrage, half the time she gets a stat boost. She can only get those stat boosts three times, so that's a 30% max stack buff. If her HP falls below 30%, she heals herself by 10%, so that's basically kind of her zombie skill. She also generates a 10% HP shield that lasts for 15 seconds, and this procs once per battle. Okay, she's bad. I mean, she's kind of fun. She's really trying to be like a UR heavy cruiser. She's not doing a good job at it, but she's trying, and it's hilarious. And the fact that she has a damage buff for the whole fleet regardless of the faction like she can buff Harkiryu she can buff New Jersey Musashi like giving them 5% damage boof is kind of funny but this ship has no survivability whatsoever and it still isn't going to have a lot of damage given it's going all out in the damage department it's still not going to deal a lot all right guys I think we made it through all of the event in all this event is looking like it's going to be super fun we're going to have a raid that's going to be fun to do like a world boss raid will be fun and we're going to get new missiles which are upgraded variants of the missiles so make sure you pick those up and then we got some new new retrofits both retrofits did amazing at kind of leaning into what the ship was doing and making them better Taiyun I think is actually going to be viable as something competitive and meta Chenhai is not Hakuryu got completely stacked she is going to be completely damage breaking like she didn't get anything buffed to her reload which is something people were wanting but she's going to hit harder than before and she already was one of the hardest hitting carriers the event was kind of hilarious because some of these elite destroyers were pretty good Good. Even the Elite Light Cruiser was kind of fun to talk about. Like, all of them had really fun kits. The Adventure Ship was also just weird, funky. All of the ships in this event had really expansive kits that were interesting to go through. Hung Chang was actually going to probably be a banner ship to lead the Chinese faction if you want to do that. She has some fun uses even outside with the ignoring the ammo buff if you want to make a fleet that just doesn't care about ammo buffs. And, you know, she can buff anybody even though you don't know what buff it will be, but she'll buff them. <laughs> that'll be the case i don't know this is a fun event i think it really wraps up the chinese faction as something that is uh, something viable you can actually just play a chinese faction now you have the ships to do it there are backliners now it's not just like joking with missile destroyers and a seaplane you actually have a carrier that can do things now you have a battle cruiser that can do things now you have three missile destroyers so you can throw one in the back and not be giving up a bunch of dps in the front they're still yatsen yatsen is one of the bus busted ships ever created and they have things going 
going on for them. So if you want to run Chinese faction ships, you can kind of do that. They do still struggle with anti-air, which, you know, if you're trying to run World 15 is going to be a struggle. But there's a lot of things you can do with that. This event is interesting. It certainly is not like a UR event. And by no means did anyone anticipate us to get like meta defining or meta breaking ships in this event. I think people would have been angry if we did get those. But I think it'll be super fun. We're going to get free gems. We're going to celebrate Lunar New Year. It's going to be a, a great time. I'm excited. I always like these events. I know they're not the most popular out there. This video will probably not get a ton of views compared to other data mine videos, but that's fine. I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm going to have a nice, fun, relaxed event here. Nothing too stressful. Just going to pick up our missiles, retrofit the people we want, sweep the banner and, and move on. And we'll be, have a UR event probably next month or in two months or something like that. But I'm really excited. I'm happy with this event. I, I have nothing really to complain about. I just, I still can't get over the fact about the elite destroyers. They're like hilarious to me. There's a lot of things about this event that I actually just really enjoyed. Harkiryu fans got a really good buff. She's probably the biggest winner of this event or this update. Like Harkiryu got really buffed and, and Taiyun also did too. So Taiyun and Harkiryu definitely the winners of this event. And I'm excited to try the new challenge mode Aquarius as well. So we'll have that. Um, that's going to happen on February 1st. Anyway, I'll stop rambling because this is a long video. Thank you guys for watching. I super appreciate it. It's going to be two videos this week that I made. Wow, we're ahead of schedule. Thank you guys for watching. I super appreciate it. Take care. And until next time, 